Hi everyone, Phil from Text for Text here. Today we're going to be looking at this Be Quiet Pure Bass 500 DX. <music> Be Quiet Pure Bass 500DX is basically a more up-to-date and sophisticated version of the Pure Bass 500 ATX case from Be Quiet. Um, the straight 500 Pure Bass has been around for a little while, uh, it's very popular, but it did have a little bit of criticism about the cooling, as in there didn't seem to be a lot of airflow, and that's where they seem to have actually uh, sorted this issue out. So this case has basically got a mesh front on it, so it allows more airflow, it's also got three fans already installed there, be quite its own fans, um, so that will obviously help with the cooling as well. Uh, obviously we'll go through all the points in a few minutes, but uh, here's the basics to it. So it's uh, a high airflow intake front panel and top cover for maximum performance. It's got three pre-installed Pure Wing 2 140mm fans for guaranteed high cooling performance and silent operation. It's got ARGB LEDs on the front and inside of the case, so that's good. Uh, it's got USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C for the latest peripheral supports. Water cooling ready for radiators up to 360mm. Various options to install up to 5 solid state drives in total. It has an installation bracket with integrated cable management for 2 solid state drives. Generous space for high-end graphics cards and large coolers. It's got a PSU shroud and smart cable routing options. Provide a neat interior and the side panel made of tempered glass. Okay, so let's have a look at this Be Quiet case. Again, it's the Be Quiet Pure Base 500 DX. Um, this is the white version, which has got black highlights on it, which makes it look pretty good. It looks a little bit like sort of a colouring you'd see on like a Stormtrooper at Star Wars sort of thing. But they also have a black version available as well, if you wish. Um, so, in basics, this case you can pick up for roughly... 90 pounds obviously we'll put links in the description so if you're interested that's 90 uk pounds obviously it's going to vary in price depending on where you are in the world so let's take a closer look so on the front you have got these two mesh strips down here uh also you've got your intakes which looks good but it's not all an intake. If you look closely, and you probably see from the B-roll, um, the actual intake is actually only that wide. The rest of it is just styling. Um, so it would have been nicer, probably a little bit wider. But still, that should be a, quite a bit of airflow coming in. And obviously that side's the same. Uh, down here are the LED strips. So there will be LED, give you sort of that Night Rider or Cylon effect lights where the lights go up and down and do different things uh, you can change that with the controls on the top you've got that tempered glass window on the side the tempered glass window does have four screws on it um, you can take them off with your thumbs it does have a screwdriver flat screwdriver support if you wish to use that instead so that's good but it would have been nice, a bit like we did with the Silent Base 600 or the 601, is there was like a little button on the back where you could press and then it just pops the side panel off. Um, that would have been pretty nice to have on this case, to be honest with you, and then it would have got rid of these little screws that stick out on the side. Uh, but still, nice looking case. On the top, you've got the control panel here. So you have got your USB 3.1 Gen 2 socket there you've got one standard usb 3 socket there you've got your power button headphone microphone socket and an rgb button there as well to change the lights this top is a mesh top it does come off so just pull it off it is magnetic 
it's sort of got a, like a plastic surround around the mesh um, which is good um, keeps it in place stops it denting and marking and bending like I've seen other ones do so that's actually quite nice uh, so good to see and it easily pops straight back on with ease um, so that's good and there is a pre-installed fan which you'll see from the inside already there which takes the hot air from inside the case and takes it out uh, also on the front you can access the mesh what covers the bottom of the case obviously that will obviously stop the dust getting in there so you can clean that easily without having to turn the case upside down and it just slides straight back in well it says it does there you go and it slides back in so it's easy to put back in so that's pretty good this front panel should just pull off oh it's a bit tight there we go we're out trying to break it um, easier if you probably squeeze the little uh, plastic bits on the inside of the case if you've got the side and um, the sides off but uh, as you can see here you can see the actual size of the air intakes which are actually smaller than what the design sort of shows you so the actual comes to about there the intakes do um, but it looks pretty good the LED lights do not go directly into the case so when you're taking the front off you don't have to worry about the cable so what happens is the LED lights obviously up and down here and there's a little what looks like a controller there it's more of like a, a touch plate contact so what happens is you, when you put this front on it pushes up against this contact here and that allows the lights to work so it saves you having to route cables from here obviously when you're pulling this off yanking, yanking the cables out um, it easily uh, connects up onto there you don't have to do anything you don't have to screw anything it just automatically connects up which is good on the back of the case it's pretty straightforward you've got two thumb screws to remove that side of the case off uh, you've got your place for your IO shield for your motherboard. You've got a 140mm fan there. Uh, it's a Silent Wing 2, so that's good. It's got a decent cooler in there already. And again, there's, a silent, there's one of those fans on the front and the top. So again, bonus. Uh, also on the back, you've got all your IO um, plates there to put in your PCI Express cards, like graphics cards and so forth. Uh, and it works in sort of a slidey motion under those two that bit comes off and then you can obviously take these ones out and put your cards in and so forth you can also insert your power supply you have to insert it from the back of the case not the side so you take this panel off like that get your power supply screw that onto the back of the power supply push your power supply inside the case and then screw those back into place and that'll hold your power supply inside the case so it saves you having to mess about doing it from the side and trying to squeeze it in uh, it's a, actually quite a good way of doing it it does does require four more screws to do it but it does the job also if we go back to the front you'll notice there is also a dust panel there as well so that'll stop obviously the dust going into the machine you can take that off it's sort of like on a door so that'll just open up and you can get in so it's up to you if you use that or not so that's going to restrict the air again a little bit um, but hopefully not too much because there is a bit of a gap I don't know if you can see from there between the mesh on the front of the case and that mesh there um, which would obviously allow more uh, air pressure to get through if they were both on top of each other that would restrict it and allow um, stop even more air getting in but it's got plenty of room as you can see you've got one fan there it's a 140 mil one it's got the room for that big radiator on there if you wanted to which is good uh, it's uh, nice to see they're using the be quiet fans as well i do like those ones and a quick look at the bottom obviously we've taken that off already but we'll take it off again have a look at the bottom so you can see what it looks like there's not much to see there you've got some vent holes on the bottom obviously where your power supply is uh, under here uh, otherwise there's not a lot to see there's nothing really under there to unscrew or anything like that gas glass panel four screws pretty straightforward Ooh, 
Got that one. Which is there, and the glass just pulls off. It is held on by these four little rubber pieces there, what the screws go through. Uh, I wouldn't trust those, so when you are undoing the screws, make sure you hold at the bottom just in case it decides to slide off. And the last thing you want is smashing the tempered glass. Uh, it does come uh, on the outside a piece of plastic to cover the glass up to keep your fingerprints off and so forth. Uh, there isn't one on the inside. The other side panel straightforward, two screws, just undo them slightly and that panel slides off and then you can see the inside of the case. One thing to note with this side panel, it does have some soundproofing on it, um, so that will obviously help dampen the sounds a little bit, uh, but bear in mind it's only on this side, none of the other sides have got it, there's none on the top, none on the front, none on the bottom, none on the glass side, so it's only going to give you a limited uh, effect, but still it's better than nothing. Okay, so we'll take a look at the inside. As you can see in there, you've got that front fan there. You've also got the back fan there. And then you've also got the top fan under here. The board's pretty straightforward. It's nice and, uh, well, white. You've got black standoffs on there, which are already installed. Obviously, you may have to move those around depending on your motherboard. Um, you've got some nice cable tied in there as well. You've got your shroud. It's a metal shroud, so it's not a cheap plasticky one, so that's good. Um, so yeah, it's painted pretty well. It looks pretty neat, and it is that nice black and white effect there. And before we look at the other side of the case, um, you can see here where you could actually fit two solid state drives as well. You can see the four screws and then the cable in would go under here. That bit does actually come out, two little clips, and then you can always put it back in once you've sorted all your cabling out, if you wish. Or you could leave it out, depending on obviously the style or what exactly you're doing, um, but it will let you put it there, like that. On the reverse side, Fairly straightforward, you can see obviously where those solid state drives would go there and the cabling. It's got some nice cutouts here for cabling as well. It's got some cable tidies already on the cables, which is good. Okay, on the back side as well, you've got your two fan connectors there for the top and the back. They are three pin connectors, they're not the PWM uh, ones which have got four pins, so these are three pin connectors. They don't connect up to any controller or anything, so you will need to connect these up to your motherboard. I don't see any splitter unless there's one in this box here. There's no form of splitter in there, so that does mean you need to make sure the motherboard you're using has room for these three fans on, or you're going to have to get yourself an adapter, um, which would have been nice for them to include one in here, in all honesty, because by the time you add these three on, and then obviously if you've got a radiator which is possibly going to be taking up one or two more fan connections, there's not many boards that have four or five fan connections on them, unless you're really spending a lot of money. The rest of the cables are all black, which is good, with the exception, and this is the bit I hate the most about any cases, and I wish they'd get the act together, is they have the sachet coloured um, connector for the audio. Which, why do you need this multicoloured bit on the end when you can go out and buy a case which is 20 quid and they can cover this bit up? That's absolutely daft because. It's all white and black. Everything's white and black. No other colours on this case, apart from probably a little sticker on the fan or whatever. But generally, it's all white and back, black. And then you've got your black motherboard in there, and your black power supply, and your whatever else you're having in there, black graphics card, and so forth. And then you have this multicoloured cable sticking out where the audio cables go. Shouldn't be happening, especially on a case which is nearly a hundred pounds. Shouldn't be happening on a 20 quid case, in all honesty, especially one what's got a side window on it. So please fix that in future cases, and it's something I'm going to keep on mentioning until you do. You've got your USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector as well. You've got your front connectors, pretty straightforward. It does have a 
um, a SATA connection there. I'm guessing that is going to be for the RGB lights on the front. It also has RGB lights on the inside, which I only just noticed a minute ago. So uh, I'll show you where those are in a second. And you've also got an RGB header there which for you to actually connect up to your motherboard so you can control the RGB lights from your motherboard rather than pressing the button on the front. Don't worry if you haven't got RGB on your motherboard, fine, you can do it from the button on the front. But the actual LED lights, if you look on the inside of the case, along the top, it might be hard to see, but they are actually running across the top here. So that will hopefully, I'm guessing, team up with the lights on the front of the case and look pretty nice. On the back, you have got your hard drive bay there. It does remove, so two screws, and it just pulls out. And then obviously you slide your hard drives in, put your screws in, and away you go. Um, so that's good, and there is room to uh, screw uh, a two and a half inch drive on the bottom as well. Screw it from the bottom and then slide it back in. So that looks pretty good as well. So there's plenty of room for solid state drives in there. There's plenty of cutouts for your cabling, so you want some nice cabling in there. You've got cutouts at the top for your 4.8 or 2.8 um, for your um, processor power. Uh, obviously you can put your 24-pin uh, connection through this area here. You've got plenty of holes along the bottom of here where the shroud is, uh, where you can put your cables for your front panel, USB, blah, 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 um, which that's pretty good to be honest. I can't see any faults there. There's no rubber around the edges or any of them, but again, they're all neat metal. There's no sharp edges. It's all folded properly uh, and smooth. The power supply shroud is non-removable, so you're stuck with that, even if you want it or not it's staying there's no way to remove that what i can see it is molded pretty well uh, into the rest of the case actually you could remove it but it is riveted in so you would have to uh, get rid of a few rivets out of there to get rid of that but then it's going to leave you a big gap down the bottom and this bit's going to probably start swinging back and forth because it's not properly secured in let's build this up and see exactly what it looks like Okay, so let's have a look at some of the lighting on here. I've turned a lot of the studio lights off so it's easy for you to see. As you can see, you've got these two strips going down the front, which basically light up. At the moment, they're sort of cycling uh, down. So as you can see, you can follow the blue light down and then it basically cycles through. Uh, but it also does the same thing on the inside. The LED light is along the top corner here and it lights up the inside and you can see the inside of the case is lighting up as well. Uh, you can change the LED lights uh, on your motherboard software if you want in, uh, or you can use the switch on the front. Obviously, you have to make sure you've got a motherboard which has got a uh, addressable RGB socket on there to be able to change it through the motherboard. Otherwise, you can still use it on the switch if you don't. Um, so the different settings on here, so if we press the switch, you can change it to all red where it sort of fades in and out and then it goes through a cycle of then green, blue and so forth. Next option is more of a dancing multicolour effect. It's probably the best way of doing it. So sort of more of a strobe effect. Uh, then you've got off, so if you don't want any colour LEDs on there, that's fine. You can have all the uh, lights off. You've got your white, and it'll stay on full white. If you press it again, it goes a little bit duller. And then it sort of fades in and out. You press the white again, and then it does that strobe effect just on white. You press it again, does it a bit faster, and again it goes to red. Press it again, it's going to fade the red in and out, then you've got the strobe effect, then you've got the sort of the double strobe effect, and then it does the same with the green and so forth. And then you've got your blue, then you've got back to red again, purple, 
then you've got multicolored and what the multicolored one does as you can see there it flows through like it did before and then you're back to your blue and then you're dancing lights that's the options you haven't got any other options other than that on there obviously depending on your motherboard you may have different options through the software for example changing colors depending on uh, the temperature or music or whatever you're doing okay next we're going to do a smoke test this is basically going to show how the machine sucks in the air and if it's getting plenty of air and so forth. So basically what we do is hold these Josh sticks up towards the front of the case and we see how much smoke it takes in. Believe it or not, this is actually a very good test. We've done it on some cases and it shows that it basically doesn't get a lot of airflow through the front. Uh, and then others will actually show even uh, better results and we're going to see exactly what this is like. So the basics is we hold this up to the front of the case like this. And as you can see, the smoke is getting sucked into the machine, which basically means that the airflow is pretty good on there because it is sucking up in a lot of fresh air. If it didn't suck in a lot of fresh air, you'd find this smoke would go basically straight up. But as you can see here, general rule is that's getting sucked into the machine. So that means it is getting a good amount of fresh air going in there. So that is very, very good news. And that is with that dust filter uh, on the inside as well. Okay, we're measuring the decibel levels now. We're measuring it from 30 centimeters away from the actual machine itself. The room decibel level in here is roughly 44 and a half decibels. With the fans running at 50%, so that's the CPU as well as the case fans, the power supply fan is turned off and the graphics card is set as off as well. Uh, the amount of decibels you are getting from this is roughly 45 and a half to 46 decibels. So it's only really just over a decibel higher um, when the machine is on. Obviously when you put your fans on full and so forth that's going to affect the speeds and everything else and that affects the noise and so forth. So the most reliable way of doing it is setting all the fan speeds at 50% because that's what it's going to be running at most of the time when you're using the machine and that gives you a better idea. Obviously if you're going to run the machine at full whack it's going to make a little bit more noise. Okay, so we did some temperatures tests on the machine to see what sort of temperatures we would get on the CPU when the, uh, it was running at full load with the fan running at 50% speed. With the front panel and the mesh on, we got an average temperature of 49 degrees. Taking the dust panel off, it dropped to 48 degrees, and taking the front panel off, it dropped down to 47 degrees. In all honesty, it's within a margin of error, and 2 degrees is not really here or there, to be honest. It's a lot better than some cases we see where the difference can be over 10, and sometimes even 15 to 20 degrees difference. So that, to me, says that it's got very good cooling for what it is. And there's only one award we can really give this, because the only real fault we found was that sashi coloured cabling for the audio um, header. So we are awarding this our Hell Yeah Award.